Thanks, Stephanie uh, is, is here. Uh, Hi, this is Josie Gutierrez okay. with Public Works. Um, we actually have Ken Ferguson with our Building and Safety. Uh, he could provide some update on the trucking, basically 9A, the trucking business at 13025 Sierra Highway. Yeah, okay. Right. How you doing? Uh, my name is Ken Ferguson. I'm an uh, employee with LA County Public Works Department. Uh, I do have some information about the GV trucking property. Um, I'm not sure if regional planning is here to speak on that, but uh, as far as the, the current status of that, they, there has been some movement on them getting uh, a permit and moving slowly forward with getting their items permitted. Uh, and there has been <clears throat> uh, regular meetings on, with them. Uh, right now, is, um, we have a meeting coming up uh, next month in March to discuss any progress and see if they have any questions. Um, there can't be any, there's really not too much they can do until the, if there's any, unless they pass all their, uh, have their public hearings or for say, for instance, the oak tree permit that they applied for. And, um, then as, once they get the, uh, permits from regional planning, so moving forward with the other permits. Great. Fantastic. So does anybody have any questions regarding that for Mr. Ferguson? I do. Okay. Um, I actually saw some of this on the most recent regional planning report that Mary circulated a day or so ago. Uh, it looks like they're, they're having to remove two shed structures and get another one permitted. Uh, but the oak tree permit was one that sort of I noticed that I hadn't sort of seen before. Is that a permit to have a structure within the drip line of the of the uh, of the oak tree, or is that a permit to actually remove the oak tree? Well, <clears throat> no, no, that the your first uh, question. So I I don't speak with for regional planning. I wouldn't be able to answer all the questions, but I did ask about. I have asked about that, and it is because they already done work within the oak uh, tree drip line. Okay, um, thank you. So that's the purpose of that. Perfect. Thank not you very much. Okay, but they're not, they're not they're not intending to take down the oak tree. It sounds like. No. Okay. That's, yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? If not, we sure appreciate you showing up here tonight and giving us the report. Look forward to working with you in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you. Nice meeting. Great. Okay. And we also have a report back from LA County staff regarding the Sleepy Valley Water Company and the failed adjacent septic system. Does anybody have an update on that? I can give you an update. Okay. Uh, septic system is still failed. The owner still hasn't repaired it. The um, nitrate levels in the water that we're getting out of our wells down in Sleepy Valley is just above the minimum reportable level. So it's uh, the, the state level is uh, one part, uh, one milligram per liter. The uh, public health order that uh, public health issued required half a milligram per liter. And... The current level is 0.44, I think, when we last looked. Uh, so the water is safe, and the water company has actually written to public health and said, look, you know, we've been well below the state level and your own level for several months now, and it's costing us a lot to do all this testing. And it's rather confusing issuing these boil water notices because nobody ever reads them, and they assume that the water is not safe to drink. Could you please let us stop doing that? So they're currently doing that. Um, 
So we'll we'll wait and see. But uh, ultimately, you know, LA County has done nothing to to enforce the fixing of that septic that's causing those problems. Okay. All right. Well, we appreciate it, Chris. Um, other item here is the ongoing issue of the water conservation ordinance uh, on the Public Works uh, GDD, which has to do with the disposal uh, trash, and the LA County response to Senate Bill. Five five two. So, does anybody from the county have an update on any of those items? The North County. You know, sorry, this is Josie Gutierrez again from Public Works. Um, um, not not sorry, not much update on the North County Trash Collection uh, Services, previously known as the GDD, but now we're calling it North County trash collection services because we don't know yet we're, whether we're going to go with garbage disposal or the residential franchise but um we're still our consultants still working on the draft eir and we're hoping to have it ready for public review sometime this spring okay all right okay, okay. and then as far as the um Senate Bill 552, yes. um, public health actually is the lead in implementing it. Um, but right now, um, our department is basically coordinating with them um, as far as there was a motion by Supervi Supervisor Barger back in January 9th on this item, and they're supposed to report back within 60 days. So sometime next month, hopefully they'll have they, they will have something. So um, so right now I don't have any substantial item to report other than public health and our uh, people from public works that's working on the county water plan is coordinating and hopefully, like I said, they'll have something to report back okay. sometime in March with the board. Yeah, that, what sixty days or ninety days? How many days did? Sorry, it was um. 60 days from the when the motion was approved, which was January 9th. Okay. All right. So, so we'll look forward to that. Um, great. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, that's all we had for the uh, Stephanie. I hope she's okay. doing okay. Um, I guess one other thing is, um, since it kind of ties in on the Senate Bill 552, would the council want some sort of, a, I guess, update relating to the county water plan itself? Yeah, well... Like the, the ongoing efforts with that? Yeah, the, the concern we have, or the, the uh, members of the community have, is that in the past, the state has not addressed any of the water usage or wells that serve four or fewer connections. And in this particular Senate bill, they're calling out the individual private water well owner as part of the participant in this new SB 552. Okay. And, and they also call out rural water systems that's undefined, at least they say rural water systems or any water system that serves 15 or less than 15 connections. So we're concerned um, because the state has never been involved with any, uh, it, the county has been involved, obviously, with the well drilling and the shared well ordinance and whatnot. But that covers either one one person directly or one one single family residence directly off of one well, or a shared well up to four is allowed through the county and reviewed by the Department of Regional Planning. Uh, the problem that, that we see or, or the concern that we have is that the state appears now to be stepping in and actually um, including the lower usage um, water well. In other words, they're, they're, they're in their definitions, they define a domestic well as serving one person or one home. And so... You know, as of right now, it appears that there's nothing mandated, um, but the fact that they've grouped us in with the, 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 the SB 552 
we're concerned that in the future, you know, they may all of a sudden uh, start requiring certain items on our wells, which would infringe upon our property rights or from, as being well owners, uh, it would infringe upon possibly the use of the water from the well. I'll relay that. Like I said, um, unfortunately, this is a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but um, um, I took some notes, so I'll relay that information and how I don't know how that all ties in with the motion that Supervisor Barker had um, made yeah. back in January. So, All right. Well, we look okay. forward to it. So that's great. Okay. Just one more thing, Don. Uh, well, we've got Josephine here. Uh, it seems that the next phase of resurfacing of Sierra Highway is probably going to start sometime in April, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, well, um, right now we have it scheduled for spring, so it could be April or May. It's all uh, right now. We're just waiting for the jock book and obviously, you know, weather delays. But as soon as I have a definite date, um, I will send. Um, the town council information about it. But yes, the phase four, which is somewhere around from Center Street to Agua Dulce Canyon Road, that is scheduled for spring. We have a couple of more projects in um, Agua Dulce, I mean, or yeah, Agua Dulce area that's coming in basically between spring and summer. So I'll update town council as we get more scheduled for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we're going to move on to Tom Lackey's office, uh, California 34th District, uh, Assembly District, that is, and report from Carla Baseo. Carla? Maybe Carlo's not here. All right, if he shows up, please let me know. Uh, next item up is from the California 21st Senate District, Senator Scott Wilk. Do we have any here, anybody here from Scott Wilkes' office that would like to share with us? Hey, the rest of the people say town council. And everyone, uh, for some reason. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, you're kind of, it's kind of like you got a bad wire connection. There's everything. Education materials on their websites for parents to view. Uh, it'll allow for parents to opt in or opt out uh, their child from taking those classes, whether it be uh, middle school or high school. Uh, aged children uh, equally school districts will now have to publicly share where to find materials in a board meeting or hearing uh, that goes uh, we've just now uh, submitted that last week uh, and then we have SB 1004 which is the wildfire settlement tax exemption bill uh, this bill will <laughs> exempt all settlements paid to victims from wildfires from state taxes uh, that will be starting with January 1st 2020 and onwards uh, Senator Wilk saw what they did with the Woolsey fire on the over in Malibu and the Thomas fire and all of those and really wanted to make sure that it applies to the entire state, not just select communities. Uh, so that's those are the two big name bills right now. I'm still waiting to hear back from our team up in Sacramento whether or not or uh, what the other bills are. Uh, and then uh, he also signed on to uh, several other bills that I still have to get the names and numbers of. Uh, but once I do, hopefully I'll be here next month. Uh, our office is a little spread thin right now, but I'm going to try to be here next month to give a full update for the legislative update, uh, as well as uh, the state, our state legislative analyst office just uh, yesterday posted a new deficit number. Uh, our state's deficit has now risen by $15 billion to what it was originally estimated for at the beginning of the uh, year, which has been completely different than what uh, Governor Newsom's uh, analysis was. His office thought that we'd be about $34, $38 billion in a deficit. Uh, our offices at the beginning of the year saw that more as a 58, and now we're thinking it's more about 78 or $73 uh, billion, which is a very big discrepancy to what the governor's office and what our offices in the legislature think. Uh, but on to SB 552, uh, five, uh, I talked to the uh, staffers in the caucus that worked on the bill, and they didn't put, there was nothing in the bill that gave the county any authority over domestic wells, domestic wells uh, being defined by them as 
uh, a group, uh, a well that serves one to four uh, households or individual uh, homes. Uh, that's what they uh, g- gave me with that. So the county has no authority to uh, meter those individual uh, domestic wells uh, or tell you how to use them uh, as they would infringe on more like property rights and uh, all of that. Uh, any questions on that that I could hopefully answer or get an answer to you regarding? Yeah, I'm a little concerned about them making that claim because it says right here, it says domestic well, a ground, I'm reading straight from the uh, Department of Water Resources Water Board's report May 2022, um, says domestic well, a groundwater well used to supply water for the domestic needs of an individual residence or a water system that is not a public water system and that has no more than four service connections as defined in section 116681 of the health and safety code okay then it goes on to say rural community is another thing under the glossary it says rural community a community with fewer than 15 service connections or regularly serving less than 25 individuals daily at least 60 days out of the year, including domestic wells. In other words, rural community in this law covers all water systems or domestic wells for human consumption that are not a public water system. So that's pretty defined right there. That totally contradicts what you've been told. So that's our concern. Uh, I understand where you're coming from, and that's what we believe to be. But they're spelling out not only a private domestic well that that infringes on our rights out here, but also as a rural community. Uh, and they come right out and say, in other words, rural community in this law covers all water systems or domestic wells for human consumption that are not a public water system. And so, you said that was the California Water Board that put that out? or This was um, this is the primer of, of, of Senate Bill 552, drought planning for small water suppliers in mm-hmm. rural communities prepared by the Department of Water Resources and the California Water Boards, dated May 2022. So maybe they've changed. I don't know. But this is the most recent thing I was able to find on the Internet. And if something's been changed, we would sure appreciate hearing about it. Right. Uh, And like I said, uh, I talked to the group, uh, the caucus that worked on the bill, and they didn't – they told me uh, domestic wells, uh, one to four service connections, are not affected by this bill as well as uh, the SGMA, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, uh, specifies the exemptions on domestic wells. Uh, That was the answer I got from the caucus straight from... Uh, Perfect. Uh, That's what we appreciate. I would just like to get something in writing that contradicts... ...issue that we could always work on and and just double check. Uh, I'll follow up, like I said, and and just make sure we have everything is coherent with all the agencies. Great. I appreciate it. Fantastic. All right. So now we're going to move on to uh, Mike Garcia, uh, Representative Jackie Owens, usually appears. I don't see her appearing just yet. Still have Thomas on the screen. But Thomas, whatever you did with your audio was perfect. You yeah, can, I just changed uh, headphones from my uh, wired one, wireless ones to uh, a different wireless one, but better. <laughs> whatever it is, keep those on. All right. Well, I don't see Jackie. If she shows up, let me know, and we'll come back to her. Uh, at this point, we're going to go on to the Santa Clara River Watershed Area Steering Committee, Measure W. Uh, that is the watershed coordinator, Peter Massey. Peter's always here. Hey, Don. Good to see you. Good to see everybody, Mary. Um, the, uh, yeah, just a couple of items. The, uh, it's already in the agenda, but the next Watershed Area Steering Committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March 6th from 
10 a.m. till noon. It'll be in person, but also there's an online option. Should be an interesting meeting because I think there's going to be a lot of uh, projects looked at or the current projects looked at that uh, are up for consideration and approval by the by the committee or at least further discussion on those. And um, I'll go ahead and drop information in the chat on the location at Santa Clarita City Hall as well as the online link in case anybody wants to join us for that. And um, uh, then the other big item is that the Water Talks program um, is going to be, uh, that we've been working on for several years now, is wrapping up uh, at the end of March and there's going to be a statewide summit uh, on the lessons learned uh, and successes from this program and similar programs around the state. Uh, that's going to be held at the end of March on the Tuesday, Wednesday, the 26th and 27th uh, here in our area. It's going to be at Public Works headquarters in Alhambra. So it is open to all um, who would like to attend. Lunch is going to be provided both days and uh, more information and registration information will be dropped in the chat as well. Great. Fantastic. Anybody have any questions for Peter? If not, thank you for the report, Peter. We look forward to talking to you next month. All right. Take care. All right. Uh, next up, we have old business. Uh, looks like we got RTG Investments, uh, the Agua Dulce Residential Project, TT50385, uh, a report given by Chris Udall. Uh, yeah, I just want to quickly share my screen. This is a nice, short and sweet one, but it just keeps me on point if I can uh, use my presentation. So... I think you should be able to uh, share. Okay. Yeah. Let me just pick this one up. Yeah. All right. Um, hopefully everybody can see that. We can see your name. Yep. There we go. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, PowerPoint decides to wake up. Um, I'll just uh, scroll through this real quick. Um, so we had, um, obviously quite interesting discussion last month. Um, I went back to public works after our meeting and I asked them to just give us copies of the sewer bond calculation worksheets for the project because they weren't included, uh, in the disclosures they'd given. Um, I asked them for some disclosures regarding the removal of these future water infrastructure. If you remember during plan check at phase one. Uh, the KWC engineering, the emails suggested that they were instructed to remove some infrastructure, which is under this plan PZ3438. I um, actually just got those disclosures this morning. Um, they asked for some additional time, so I haven't really had time to unpack those. Um, and I also asked for some disclosures regarding, you know, how the decision arose to give the developer an 80% discount on these water main bonds um, before they'd even actually bonded them in the first place. And as we know, um, it certainly appears that the bonds from 2002 are, are no longer valid for the project. Um, those two arrived this morning and uh, I was uh, otherwise engaged and not really minded to go and unpack them all in no time at all. Um, so I'll, I'll take a look through those. Um, I also exchanged an email with Art Vanderviz of Public Works. Uh, he confirmed that he'd actually met the developer last week and uh, indicated that the developer's now got an approved erosion control plan. And in fact, there has been some activity on the southern boundary of phase one where these um, ponds that are intended to, to contain stormwater runoff have been constructed, I think presumably because Caltrans might be a little concerned that all this stuff would run down the hill and then slap into the 14, which is on the other side of that piece of property. Um, uh, Mr. Vanderbilt has also confirmed that uh, the replacement bonds are not in place. Uh, it's almost, I would say, a year since LA County gave the developer these bond calculation worksheets uh, for the $21 million. I think it's worth pointing out that 
you know, getting a bond is normally re requires you to come up with three to five percent of the value of the bond. So if they're 15 million, you know, the developers are supposed to come up with three to five percent of 15 million to get these things running, and obviously haven't done that for reasons best known to themselves. But clearly, you know, th there are still no valid bonds for the project, with the exception of the rough grading, which was covered by that letter of credit from July of 2022. Um, so there's a couple of things. I mean, in the last meeting, we agreed to write to Supervisor Varga. Um, I've been holding back on that until I see these disclosures, just in case there's any salient points about the bond discounting and also the removal of this future water infrastructure that we need to cover in that letter. I think it's better to send her one letter rather than two or three so they can answer all these points at once. And something occurred to me after our discussion at the last meeting, um, and it really goes back to the meeting that we had back in July or August, I think, with myself and Mary and Don, and, and Cindy Grimes was there with uh, Stephanie and Anish and uh, Mr. Vanderbiz. There was a lot of pushback to mm -hmm. confirming that this letter of credit had actually renewed. So it was issued in July of 2022, and it is technically, as it's written, supposed to renew automatically on the first anniversary, unless it's cancelled. And we know that there's been some turmoil over at Credit Suisse. Um, and I, you know, it, to me, there's a, there's a parallel here. Uh, the county was very reticent to write to Credit Suisse and just say, hey, look, you know, this letter of credit is still valid for the rough grading. Um, they, they pushed back extensively on it. Previously, the county had pushed back very heavily on the bonding and said, no, you know, this is fully bonded, fully valid. And then we wrote to the bond holder, in this case, Travelers Insurance, and they came back and said, well, actually, you know, under the law, these bonds aren't valid anymore because they haven't renewed the multiple agreement. And I think there was perhaps a lesson there. Um, the letter of credit uh, documentation that we were given by the county has the contact deals details of the person at Credit Suisse in Zurich, and uh, I would, you know, like to be able to just drop them an email and say, look, you know, we're the town council where this development is happening. You guys issued this letter of credit. Uh, technically, it renews every year. Could you confirm that it renewed on its anniversary in July of 2023? Um, uh, I, I'd like to offer that out to the council. I think it's a, a simple email to send and it will give us some comfort or otherwise that um, the current work that's going on the site still has a valid bond sitting underneath. Okay. All right. So what's the uh, council's view or opinion or ideas on what Chris is thinking of doing? So, Chris, you're looking to um, email Credit Suisse to confirm if the letter of credit has been renewed, correct? Yes, that's correct, yeah. So th that uh, documentation that was shared has the contact point of Credit Suisse on it, their email address. And I think we should, um, you know, we, we should be mindful of the county's reticence to, to do these things, which otherwise seem quite reasonable to do. Yeah. I, I don't see any reason why not. So um, anybody else on the council? I think it's a great idea. We need to know. All right. So I don't know that we need a motion because you're the one that's that's actually spearheading that particular committee. Um, but but I'll go ahead and make a motion. OK. Yeah. Just um, yeah. Yeah. I'll so. I will move that um, Chris contact Credit Suisse to confirm that the letter of credit has been renewed or to find out the status of what the letter of credit is. Yes. All right. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Great. Sounds good. Great. Thank you very much. Nice and short and sweet. We'll see what they say. All right. Now, we've got uh, the BESS project, which is the Battery Energy Storage Systems. 
wait, before you go there. Yes. Um, oh, oh, oh. The oh. Neighbors. Yep, yep. 80 Neighbors, uh, which is the community group to save rural Aguadulce. Do we have a report or anything from them? Yes. Marcy um, sent me an email before the meeting and said she won't be on Zoom tonight. Um, I think Glenn may be listening in. Um, but she wanted to let us know that she really has nothing to report. They've been in contact with the attorney on a regular basis, so he is up to date on whatever is going on with the RTG project. He has yet to use up the retainer, so we're not looking to do any kind of fundraising at this point. I will post onto the Facebook group whenever anything is going on. Perfect. So yeah. that's her update. That's a good report. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that for right now, <clears throat> Lakes to Rest RTG project. The next project is the uh, BESS project, B-E-S-S. -S. And I don't know, is there anyone here that has an update on what's going on with that? Seems rather confusing to me. Um, anybody? Yeah, I, uh, obviously, I think the Board of Supervisors shut the stable door after the horse had bolted. I mean, ultimately, the um, the basis of approving the best was the state level um, uh, mandate for green energy storage solutions, and the state essentially gave themselves the authority to override the local planning authorities in the approval of these um, these facilities. Um, so the, the the county regional planning initially. Uh, gave the uh, gave the best a review that was within that framework, but they neglected to do a number of things that would have reasonably been expected. And my understanding is that the community group in Acton has now, if not already initiated, is about to initiate a, a lawsuit against the county and presumably the, the developer or owner of that facility to, to make sure these things are duly considered because I think uh, understandably they're concerned about uh, the potential impacts on their groundwater supply in the event of a thermal runaway and a fire um, and also um, just generally the the fact that uh, there's, there's <laughs> quite a significant um, fire risk once lithium decides it's going to catch fire, it, it, it's not particularly easy to extinguish, and that's not good in a high fire hazard severity zone. So I did speak to um, Ruthie Brock probably about a week ago, and she mentioned that that was the direction this was all going in, but uh, obviously it'll it'll make its way through the courts, and I'm sure that uh, Acton Town, Town Council will be updated regularly on what's going on there. Okay. All right. Thank you much, Chris. Um, anybody else have anything to report on the BEST project? If not, we're going to move on to the President's Report, uh, which, uh, as everybody realizes, we're having our meeting format tonight by Zoom. And we will have, uh, in an effort to be most inclusive with meeting participation, the Council will continue with virtual meetings and have an in-person hybrid meeting once every quarter. Those in-person hybrid meetings will be March, June, September, and December. December will be in-person only without the hybrid. And the location for those in-person meetings will be the Agua Dulce Women's Club, which for those of you that don't know is 33201 Agua Dulce Canyon Road based on public participation at in-person meetings, we may revisit and amend this schedule and format. So next up, we have the incoming correspondence for action. Uh, we have uh, the letter from the Land, Sea, Air, Aguadulce Airport agenda, um, action for response. So does anybody have any um, comments on that or do we just write the letter that we've written in the past, Mary? Yeah, I think just so that everybody understands exactly what this is about, um, when the airport got their um, approval on their permit, they were required, initially it was once a quarter, and now it's just twice a year, 
but they the airport is required to send the town council a letter saying, hey, do you want to agendize the airport for a future meeting? And um, we get that every six months. And our standard letter is we don't have any issues that have been brought to us that we would need to agendize the airport. Um, so currently we are not going to agendize the airport, but if in the future something does come up, we will notify you and agendize it. Okay. So that, that, that's a little history. Because I, I kind of forget that, that, you know, there's some new people in on um, what we've done in the past. And this is something that we do every six months. So it seems pretty routine. Um, so that's the history. Yeah. And, um, and the basis of that, when they went for their condition to use permit, the, 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 the county was concerned that something might happen and the community wouldn't be uh, involved or wouldn't have a word in it. And so primarily it was, it was kind of a, uh, keep them honest type deal. And, and it isn't just a matter of, oh, what's going, what's going on at the airport? You know, it's not just a, a question like that. It's, it's something where that particular meeting would require an attorney being present. It would have to be a legal meeting. It was, it's a, a whole lot of ramifications other than just some, someone visiting our meeting and saying, hey, I want to put up uh, uh, a garage expansion or something like that. So, um, and and I think the way it would really be handled is if someone has a concern about the airport, we would address it as council member first. And then if we come to a dead end or where, hey, we, we need to have the airport present to give their um, two cents on this particular subject, that's when they would be involved. But until that occurs, I, I, we've just been sending them a letter saying that nothing has come up. Uh, Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors having a public hearing concerning 2045 Climate Action Plan, otherwise known as CAP. That's uh, March 12th downtown at the Hall of Administration on West Temple Street. And I, I got a notice, or I, I actually went to the website and saw that that has been continued to April 16th. Okay. So All we'll right. put that on the agenda for next month, too. All right. Cool. And we also have Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors public hearing on proposed amendments to the multifamily residential parking ordinance. Has that been extended to, or is that going to be? Mm, no. And the fact that we don't really have any multifamily residential um, dwellings here doesn't well, really affect us. Concerned about it? You're welcome to go down and sit through that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, incoming correspondence for notice, uh, the draft ADU ordinance amendments. Um, uh, if you have any comments, you need to direct those comments and suggestions to Kenneth Warner. At and, planning. Yeah. and that's already, the, the comment period has already um, oh, oh, happened. Yeah. Ah, okay. And I haven't really taken a good look at it. And, and um, I will, because we've still got time if, if um, they have a hearing at the Regional Planning Commission, we can submit comments for that. But I will take a look at it and report back in March. Okay, perfect. And LA County Office of Emergency Management, the survey for residents and businesses who sustained damage during the recent rainstorms. You can go to the website listed there in our minutes or in our uh, agenda. The Summit for Equity and Resilience in Water. It's an that's equity. the thing that um, Peter was talking about. And that's March 26th and 27th, which is next month. Um, so we're going to bring that up at next meeting also, which will be a in-person hybrid meeting. Uh, regional planning plans that have been filed. You got a 25,000 watt standby diesel generator for an existing wireless communication facility. Uh, we also have grapevines on a vacant property that's zoned A1. 
Yes, they need a permit to grow grapevines. A 10,400 Escondido Canyon Road would like to build a detached ADU. Uh, Wish them luck. Um, And we have a Sunny Day Acres Animal Care and Control License for a dog training permit. Training and exercise yard at 34128 Aguadosa Canyon Road. Uh, Everybody knows where Sunny Day's Acres is. So... We also have a certificate of compliance, which is a a regional planning issue on uh, Sierra Highway. Um, They want to build a, uh, they want to bring into compliance a 5180 square foot single family, single family residence with an 850 square foot attached garage and a 300 square foot porch. Five bedrooms, first floor is 4,620 square feet. So it's a big one. Uh, at Solid Canyon Road, we've got installation of irrigation production well. And at Rocking Horse, Carousel Ranch, Pancake Breakfast Fundraiser. That's already been helped. So, hope they had a good time. We got another new single family residence, two guard garage on vacant land. Uh, the parcel number is listed there. And Rocking Horse Road, Carousel Ranch. They have a conditional use permit renewal allowing continued operation of the equestrian facility. Uh, also legalize two storage sheds, one outhouse, two open pergola structures, and one attached pergola structure on the property. And on 13025 Sierra Highway, a new... Accessory dwelling unit, legalize unpermitted storage and retaining wall and demolish unpermitted storage facilities. That's the trucking outfit down there in Sleepy Valley. So at this point, we're at the open forum portion of the meeting. And if anybody would like to say something, looks like Cindy's hand is up there. We're going to turn this meeting over to Cindy for about three minutes. Cindy? Um, I have something that I've been in touch with Officer Martinez about, and when you brought up the airport, it kind of struck my memory to bring it up. Um, Telephone Road, where does that come into play when it comes down to the back portion of the airport and use for it? Does anybody know, like, Officer Martinez, do you know I've emailed you about the off-road vehicles. Um, I did also email uh, Officer Delgado, and I have not heard back from him as of yet. But when you brought up the airport, I was questioning that because there is a lot, there has been recently more so activity than in the past. Okay, so, I mean, I'm looking on Google Maps. It's the like the fire road that kind of goes uh, just east of the uh, the airport. What is your exact question as far as like what's enforceable there or what like? Yeah, what's enforceable? Like, is it something that we should try to bring up to the air park about what can we do as residents on our side? Because there's a the activities coming so, through and they are speeding really hard. So I I don't know how we can. So the land looks like it's owned by the airport because it's the Land Sea Air Lease Corporation that owns it. And then there is a uh, Angeles Forest patch on the north side of the airport, uh, and the rest of it is all privately owned. So if they want to fence it, trespass anyone that's caught on there, they can and restrict access you know, with boulders or wherever they're coming in. But um, as far as... Other than trespassing, if it's a privately owned area, there's nothing the off-road team's going to be able to enforce. There's not any, any vehicle codes that they're going to be able to cite anybody on or anything like that. And then uh, to kind of caveat on that, um, the off-road team right now is still, the grant got approved. It has been downtown since last October, uh, from my, if I recall correctly. And downtown still has not signed it. We have asked several different upper, 
you know, commanders and chiefs about it. I don't know what kind of things happen downtown as far as, you know, paying Peter to pay Paul, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but the, the grant funding, funding that, 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 uh, the offer team operates has been approved for a long time. This is the time that it needs to be implemented because the winter season is the busy season. And the last couple of years, since the new regime has come in, they don't approve it till late spring. So then it becomes a summer enforcement thing, which is less busy for off-road um, use than it is for the winter. So they're not even operating right now as far as that goes. Um, they're still being kept you know, abreast of any of the any of the hot spots and issues, but there's not much, especially if it's all private land. There's not going to be anything they can enforce. They can only enforce uh, that, what does it look like, uh, 34 acres on the north side is the only part that's uh, public land. The rest of it is all privately owned. Okay, so then if someone had a concern, they should contact the sheriff's department and tell them what their concerns are as to the use of the off-road area. Is that is that correct? Well, I mean, the there, it's all private lands. So, oh. other than that little, that little, that little, no, the very north tip of the of the uh, airport has a weird shaped and patch. Everything else I'm looking at is all privately owned by either the airport or individuals. So, every every where anyone is trespassing, um, you know, which is a big chunk of it is going to be the airport people. They would have to be cited for trespassing if they're caught. So oh. then the other the other thing is our policies have greatly changed as far as what we're allowed to chase and what we're not. Um, I can't get in a pursuit with someone if they don't pull over willingly, like most of them don't. They take off on me. I can't pursue them. Um, you know, so that 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 ends it right there. Guys, they're on my my light bar and they keep on going. Well, congratulations. You know, hopefully oh. the universe has karma. Okay, so then it would be up to the landowner to report trespassing. Is that, am I kind of hearing Correct. you? Correct, yeah. Yep. And, if, and if, if, and if it's outside of it and it's one of these other individuals who just happens to own it, um, you know, they're they're riding on their own land, yeah. you know, uh, and they're, they're big swaths of, of acreage. So if you know who they are, I mean, I, you could always uh, contact them and say, hey, like, this is what's going on on your property. The guy goes, oh, it's me? I don't know. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Mary, so. is there any way that we can get the information for the air park? I haven't been able to find it when I when I have tried to look it up. It comes through like a very official site. And I don't feel this is something that we need to agenda, the, you know, put on the agenda for the town council. But if we can get some information on how to contact them, it may help with this situation, if they can control it a little bit on their side, yeah. um, you know, and even if they are the ones that need to call and say, yeah, we, we recognize we're having this problem too. And they may not be even be aware. So is, is there an address or what? Um, um, I'll try and get um, a good contact for you on, on who to address for that. Um, I know in the past they have put up fences and they get cut down. So, mm -hmm. um, it, and, and as really the, the bulk of the airport is really the airport, the, the um, land around it that they're using for the off-road is less of a an issue for the airport manager because... You know, he's he's more concerned about um, airport operations. So, but I will I will definitely get a contact for you if it's not with um, the airport management. I'll get somebody from Lancy Air to um, be able to have have some sort of contact that you can talk to. Okay, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Sure. Great. Anybody else for open forum? All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to add to that, Don. Uh, one of the things that's a big concern is, you know, we, we these riders are coming from 
typically they're traversing from Darling Road, which is public road, what? down Darling, all the way to where Tyndall and Darling intersect, going through railroad trail, horse trail, whatever it is, through the backside of the air park. And what's troubling is the speed at which they're going to where our neighbors have seen them catch air coming over the hill as they're coming up Darling. And I've we travel that road from time to time, and we go very slow because there's horses, there's people walking, there's runners. Sure. So I know that when they're on the private road or in the private land, that's hard to manage. But um, the concern is that the speed at which these – people are going, somebody's going to get hurt to the point where we've actually put cameras at the corner intersection because we're anticipating somebody's going to get seriously hurt. And it's, it's, you know, we're not trying to be bad neighbors, but we, we see them flying at speeds that are, you know, meant for where it's, there's not regular residential traffic or people on foot or horse going through. So, that's where the real concern lies. I know it's really hard because the timing has to be right. Um, somebody might get caught in somebody's grill of their truck. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we just, we want to bring it to the attention and see if there's whatever can be done to help it um, is beneficial. And a lot of times there's two or three riders at a time that are coming through. So, yeah. That's where the con- real concern is coming up is is that they're they're endangering the people that, that live in the community. So so Cliff, um, the speed issue is actually on Darling. Yeah, it's Darling. So what happens is when you when you come off of I would all say Canyon Road on onto Darling. So say you come up to the convenience store and the Keller Williams Realty, take a right. The county road ends. It becomes no longer a a county maintained road and there's a couple of pretty steep hills where they come up through it's where they were going to put the cell tower a couple years ago right and it's all dirt and rough terrain and um typically it's not heavily traveled but when you know people aren't thinking ahead and they're they're like i said they're catching air coming over that first hill which is very steep and very blind uh, if somebody's on the other side, there there will be no way they can stop. So, Deputy Martinez, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. So, if it's not county maintained, it becomes a private road, and there's no vehicle code sections that are enforceable. Okay. Right. Um, so, um, but- I, I have done patrols on both sides because uh, the complaint I was getting was the can ams on the opposite of Darling on the. Uh, other side where it's more like a grid and they were going up and down the roads and whatnot. <clears throat> and um, if, like I said, if I catch them, that's great, but they have to pull over because none of us can chase them. Huh. So the minute the minute they, they turn and burn and go away, it's over. So that's, that's a, I have that problem all the time in Acton. I'll go approach somebody. I catch these guys in the wash. I have letters of agency on file ready to trespass the whole nine yards. I kick on my lights and I see dust. And they're they're well aware that we can't chase them. Okay. If we catch them in the grill of our truck, we'll call you and you can come help us. Yeah. And, I mean, we'll and then you, they're, the they're being reckless. They're being reckless. So, I mean, you're, you're not going to be held liable. They're being reckless. Yeah. So that, that's, you know, that's shame on them. Uh, like I said, if you know who these people are, absolutely yeah. go talk to them. You know, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the main thing. Like, you know, a lot of what I've been finding is a lot of these are newer families to the community that don't know any better and they're going to find out the real hard way. Um, you know, when something does go sideways or when like the, that, luckily that kid, uh, in Acton when, you know, like he was 10 meters away from severing his, uh, the moral artery. And luckily they, they were able to get a tourniquet on him and airlift him. But you know, we're not near hospitals. We're not near medical care. You don't. We don't have a full-on paramedic at 81s or 80s. So you're. They're coming from 107s. That's Sierra Highway and uh, and Solid Ed Canyon down in Santa Clarita. And, you know, that's where the nearest paramedic station is. 
it, the response times are not great for that stuff, and you bleed out in minutes. So, <laughs> Orlando, I remember, you know, when they it, probably 25, 30 years ago, when the off road team, you know, these guys were prof like professional riders, and their bikes would outrun any bikes that you could buy off the, you know, out of the shops. And so, uh, is that the off-road team that you're referring to? In other words, no. Yes. However, the pre the previous generation, and I don't, I, I'm going to put this as lightly as possible, was operating a lot in the gray and and, and uh, was technically not doing things a hundred percent legal and giving citations and uh, charges to things that they couldn't. That's why I emphasize the. The private property aspect of it okay. so um we suffered because of that a lot of you know like basically we're always paying types of accidents happen it never ever relieves the trauma of the person who's innocent um that has to witness and deal with that um and then also on the other corner so you have the you have the picture of where the angeles forest has that little plot over there on that, I want to say the north side, there's a plot right here behind us too, which they're using as also playground area. So who would we contact to have them enforce it also? Because, you know, they're, they're coming off of that t telephone road, flying up through the gate. Generally, Angeles Forest land is for public use and they're allowed to ride. Generally, there is some exemptions on them, but usually when it's Angeles Forest, they're they're allowed to ride it. The their office is in Acton, uh, the Fork Street, and you can they, they'd be better uh, better equipped to answer that question. But uh, that's why everything like uh, like on the southeast side of uh, Soledad up in the mountains, that's why you can go hunting on there. That's why you can do a lot more things on those hills because they are for public use kind of thing. Even though it's only five acres in a residential area with somebody building a brand new house right next door to it? Well, I yeah. think... It's yeah, public think, land. Yeah, I think what he's saying is you go to the Angeles Forest headquarters, which is right there next to the library, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on Crown Valley. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So correct. And I think there, at least tell them your concern, and then they've been made aware... And if they choose not to do anything, or if they say it's perfectly legal, you know, then it sounds like the only option is going to be to file some kind of a trespassing charge. Um, you know, I, I think that that it, it's kind of working your way through the system. And um, has and, anybody? And it sounds like in order to do a trespassing, you've got to have um, something on file indicating that they don't have permission and you've got to have deputy martinez or somebody out there who can catch them in the act and not have to chase them so right. there's a there's a lot of it, it it puts a pretty narrow um vision on what's enforceable which is pretty narrow so um I think we asked, do you know who, are they neighbors, or do you know the people who are are on the ATVs? No, not at all. Um, they come flying through so fast. We've tried to stop them. Um, next door's tried to stop them. They, they just blow by everybody. There's horses they blow by, and it, it is very sporadic, but it is extremely dangerous. Um, so, and know, is this something that's just started up recently? Um, well, we've always had the issue. We have seen the off-road team, because we've been here for 13 years, so we've seen the off-road team go through there a few times. It really just got super bad within the past six months to eight months. Um, Christmas time was over the top, and... Now, I mean, we knew there was a guy, it seemed like maybe he was working or going to visit, and he would come flying through every day 
all the way into town and we would hear him drive all the way past Boston Henry, all the way down towards the other end of the airport um, to where he finally, his, his motorcycle kind of drifted out into the oblivion. But he was flying through town and there's no doubt that he, he wasn't because of, you know, we're hearing the sound and all that. And then we would hear him come back. And we'd hear him as soon as he start camp coming by the air park on Aqua Dulce Canyon and then come all the way down and rip up our, you know, all the hills. And, you know, it just so I wish we did know them. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to determine if it's if it's something that is has just started, probably some new residents who maybe are unaware Um well, but we've, we've got a really to... nice off-road spot when it's not raining and it's closed over um, off of Sierra Highway. You know that, and that that would if you ever do run into them or, or you do stop them, say, "Hey, there is a designated off-road spot in Aguadulce. Go use it." Um, some of it also has to do with Google Maps because we've had Amazon trucks come. And they can't go any farther because the airport has, you know, a fence there. They can't go any farther and they have to figure out how to back up. The one fire got started by the lift driver back there. We've had just some of the most odd <laughs> things try to come through there. Um, from our side, it's obvious they can't get through it. But on the other side, I, that's where I'm saying maybe the airport, they can help so us. On, on Google Maps, you can actually go where it's like report an issue. And you could type up exactly where it's wrong. Yep. So you submit that, and then they, they update it. So, like, you, like if it's, like, hey, like, where they direct the drill deliver drivers up this one way, but it's much easier, a different way to get to your house, you can you can absolutely go on there and just, like, report an issue, and you explain it, and then you'll, they'll contact you. You give them your email if, they're, if they need further clarification. And kind I of, have done that um, for over the past three years. Mm. Ever since that fire, and then we had people who brought semi trucks up, thinking that they were going to get over there by Shady Lane, mm. and they had to back up. There was no way they were going to come. So I started reporting it to Google Maps um, as a road closed, but it's still showing as a trail or something. And you know, like Cliff said, it's, it's the speed. It's not that, honestly. We don't. It doesn't bother us that they drive through there. It's just the speed issue. And, and the speed is the only thing that's not enforceable because it's not, it's not a public road. So, yeah. um, is it enforceable if we put some chains up? Is so you're allowed. I'm to sorry. Block. You know when you start if, to if you guys have... that you can't do anything to help them besides try to stop them when they're kind of out of control. I really don't want to put myself I'm, in that I'm not, situation. I'm not um, disagreeing with you, but. So as far as putting up fencing, speed bumps, anything like that, as long as you do not block access to everyone that has an easement to that road. So if you get, if all the neighbors get together and say, hey, we want to put up a fence, uh, we want to, whatever you guys want to do. Um, now, mind you, motorcycles, are, the infrastructure is going to have to be a little bit bigger because you could always go around it or whatever. Um, as long as everyone has access to it, you know, you're, you're more than more than you know go at it it's a private road you guys have all the easements you know either do like a combination lock or everyone has a key just like they do up at briggs um uh, i would ask if i could get access and stuff and that's up to you guys if you guys want to give it to me and obviously make sure that fire has some way to um to access your your guys houses in case of a fire yeah we've done a few situations like that um and just like Mary said, like what happens on the other side, they just tear it down. Yeah. Um, I, you know, so, okay, well, maybe we can get some, you know, help through the air park and maybe we can work on it hey. as a, as a group and leave the council out of it. But, you know, as hopefully we can get some resolve and nobody gets hurt. Yeah. Um, and it wouldn't hurt since it's, it's on your private road area to post some signs, you know, come up with a, with what you want as signs, maybe no off road vehicles or um, blind hill, those sorts of things. It may, 
it may make a difference. Yeah, it's worth a try. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so we have a high speed rail update. Pam Walter, if Pam's around. I don't think Pam's hasn't been here for a while. Um, new business is moving right on to the committee reports. Election committee. We got the chair here. We got Rosie. Rosie's hello, Rosie. Hi. You're uh, on. Uh, yes. Um, I haven't been around too much lately. Uh, I had real hard five months. I've been in another hospital many times, a month at a time. So I'm back. Um, I'm really moving forward now and getting much better. So I should be ready for the elections. Okay. Uh, it should be fine. Um, I don't have much to say because there's no elections at the moment. Right. But anyway, I'll be posting and telling you guys what I have. And when I, when it gets closer, then we will report more at that time. Good. Okay? I'm glad you're feeling better. That's yes, crazy. I am doing much better. I was walking, and that's a big one because I wasn't able to walk. Yeah, you look. You're, you're yeah, now, now I can do that. So that's a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Good. And I'm being very active. That's another thing. Awesome. I do, I do a lot of shopping. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you fill up your cart and then you put it all back. That's right. That's right. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you, everybody. All right. Film committee report from Candy Clemente. Uh, there were five. And Chris, your note, I did contact Oscar and ask him why that went there. And it's supposed to go to another Chris, but he, I reminded him that I should be uh, emailed on those also. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Good enough. Sure, thank you. All right. Parks and Trails. Mary Johnson. You're muted. Yeah. Um, I don't really have too much to report, but I, I have had some people who are not real thrilled with um, Vasquez Rocks being closed to equestrians um, as much as they have been. And I'm just trying to figure out how come Vasquez Rocks um, closures aren't in correspondence to the other regional and natural areas that LA County Parks has. So I'm, I, I need to do a little bit of research on that because that hey Mary, it's my understanding they've had some issues with the horse trailers getting stuck um, down down below and uh -huh. then tearing up the road. Is from what I re uh, recall when I talked to them last down there at the park. So I asked I asked something similar like, hey, so what what is it like? And it's not necessarily the horses on the trail. It it seemed to be more of the trailers, the weight, and everything, and how it was, they're kind of having to come back and fix stuff afterwards because of just how how it messes up after the rains if the ground's not firm enough. So trailers, not horses. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll see what I can find because based on the weather forecast, it looks like we've got, you know, rain coming pretty much off and on for the, the next few weeks. And I know what, what they had said was a hard closure for five days after rain. Well, yeah. um, I, I was out doing just some hiking today. It rained yesterday, yeah. and yeah. the I ran into horses in, in my area in, in dirt that it was just fine. Yeah. So I'm, I, I need to get some sort of clarification, so I'll, I'm going to work on that. Okay. It seems to me like it. It, 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 it's got to be tied to the amount of rain also. Just to say rain, right. I mean, sometimes we record, you know, three hundredths of an inch. Is that considered rain that, that's deserving of a five-day delay? I don't know. You know, the, the health department with these well tests, um, they have a delay, but it's, it's after a total of two inches or more over a 10-day period type of thing. So... Anyway, see what you can find out. Uh, I wasn't aware of the trailer situation, but it just seemed to me like, uh, you know, and obviously that posting came out after we did have quite a bit of rain, 
well, what happens when we don't have that much rain? You know, is right. this day delay going to be instigated continuously? All right, great. We'll look forward to hearing back from you. Okay. Water stewardship. Uh, I kind of filled in everybody with what I found on the SB 552. So we'll, we'll, I'm going to forward that you know, findings off to um, uh, Scott Wilkes office and we'll see you know it, from what they're saying that's great that's the way it should be and where where it doesn't apply to four or fewer connections or to private individual wells um but the only thing i could find on the internet said that that you know that they were all included in this law so we'll see what they come back with maybe there's another printing and i hope there is hey don can i uh, chime in really quick yeah uh so after I just finished uh, rereading the bill, and in the bill, uh, section D of the bill, uh, domestic wells is defined as uh, section what the same definition as section 116681 of the Health and Safety Code, okay. uh, which that then translates uh, reading code 116681. Uh, domestic well means groundwater well used to supply water for the domestic needs of an individual residence or a water system that is not a public water system and has no more than four uh, service connections. So okay. that goes in line with what I heard from the caucus. Okay. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the specific, in both the, the legal code and the uh, bill wording. Okay, but the bill, at least what I received, says that, you know, it says, coming right on, says, in other words, rural community in this law covers all water systems or domestic wells for human consumption that are not a public water system. So with that being as the definition, they're kind of state when they say this law applies to this, um, I'm still confused. So yeah, it, 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 it is. And like I said, I'll get clarification. I just wanted to uh, bring that up that, okay. uh, <clears throat> The, so you, the law you found itself. The same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good enough. Look forward to hearing from you. All right. Um, next up, we have Ways and Means. Scott's not here. Disaster planning. Chris, do you have anything to update us with? Yeah. As we heard, we have now a CERT container and a very, very nice one. Ex-U.S. Army military surplus with insulation and two doors and a ramp sitting at the Women's Club. I think there are grant funds available to put various bits and pieces in there. Gary Hebden, uh, a couple of weeks ago, shared a document that he'd authored a few years ago. Uh, needs a little bit of updating, but um, we will presumably uh, work on updating that. And we now have um, at least a container back. I think it may be a little time before it gets filled with supplies because <laughs> When we get to the point where we move it around the back of the women's club, everything's going to have to come out of it. So I th think we'll uh, we'll wait while it's in its final resting place before we stuff stuff in it. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. 